when I was in college, I worked as a resident advisor. And one of the things you did whenever a school year started is you always started out more stern, more strict, because it was easier to be harder than let up than it was to be to start off soft and then have to get harder later in the year. So one of the things you looked for was for someone to mess up, right? You wanted to make an example of someone. So they would say, whoa, this guy means business. We have to pay attention. This guy is on his game. And, you know, today we're going to talk about how God did that with the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Hi, I'm Shauna. This is my husband, Pete. We're Gallagher Family Discipleship, and we invite you into our home to come and study the Bible with us. We are on 2 Peter uh, chapter 2. We have been going over verses uh, 4 through 10 uh, in a series of three parts, um, and today we're going to finish that part up, and I'm going to read verses 6 through 10, and we'll get started the discussion. It says, If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard if this is so then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment this is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. So here, uh, Peter tells us that God made an example of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were living a lifestyle uh, that was contrary to God's word. Lot was there. He was a righteous man. He lived among them. It said that his soul was uh, vexed. vexed. And it, it really disrupted him to see how evil things was around him. It bothered him deep down inside because he knew what God wanted for their lives. And God uh, and he's seen them going the opposite direction. So God made this example. You know that fire and brimstone rained down from heaven and destroyed these two cities. That's right. You know, there is uh, so much to learn. And I think that we kind of learned the Sunday school lesson growing up. And, and if you dig deeper into it and understand that it's mentioned a few times throughout the Bible and one of the the issues that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah had wasn't it was sin, but it wasn't just their sin. But they were proud of it. It says here, you know, they were bold and arrogant about it. They they did not care to uh, flaunt it. To flaunt it, right? Even to the point of they were going to mistreat and misuse celestial beings, angels. Mm -hmm. uh, it they had no regard for what was holy, what was righteous, what was God's, and um, they had become their own god. Right, and you, and you think about that, and you think about God is going to, these three-part lesson, I guess, we've done here on this scripture is God will not let rebellion go unpunished. And here he gives an example. He says, look, this is what's going to happen to those who rebel against me, and it destroys Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. And, you know, one of the things that we have to realize is there's a day of judgment coming. Uh, you know, we live in the United States of America. If you are a Bible-believing Christian and you love Jesus Christ with all your heart, you've got to be a little tormented about what's going on around you mm -hmm. with what you see, with what we've accepted, with what we've allowed, with what's being taught in our school system, with, what, with what's on television, with what's on your news feed, uh, on Facebook. It's got to bother you because you know it's not right. You know it's not normal. There should be a cry within you, hey, bring us back to you, God, right? Because we're getting so far away. And we seem to just keep getting further and further and further away from God. And our hearts should be crying, God, we want to be closer. That's right. You know, we really need uh, to get back to the basics, uh, keeping the main thing, the main thing, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we should live like God has uh, commanded us, which is we should love God and we should love others. And in that love, we need to be truthful with one another. Uh, we need to stand up for those that uh, do not have a voice. Uh, we need to um, proclaim what is truth because there is an absolute truth. God created okay. that absolute truth. And the whole world, the whole universe um, operates on those absolute truths created by God. Uh, so we have to be a people that um, we rise up and we say, okay, 
God, we want to see these people saved like you want to see these people saved. Uh, we don't want to see people fall into harsh judgment. You know, Lot might have been in that world that was chaos and was evil and unpure and unrighteous, but Lot was not unrighteous. So God, what did he do? He saved him. So if we are uh, the righteous, he will save us. Right, and I mean, you know anything about the story, you know that Abraham cried out to God to save the city yeah. because he didn't want to see these people uh, destroyed. And uh, the, it didn't work out in Abraham's favor, but we have to realize that the, the I guess the meaning of this story is God will punish those who are in rebellion, mm -hmm. but he will also rescue those who are in obedience. And Lot and his family was rescued and saved from the destruction. That's right. uh, going forward, remember there's four things a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. That's exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself by reading the Word of God, and engage this world for Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.